Welcome to episode 9 of the Grand Turismo Bros podcast. I have bros in tow today. Three of the best organizers of racing series anywhere in this huge flat earth. It's the GTRSL, GTSRL crew. I've done that more than once before, messing up that long, long acronym. So have we. <laughs> uh, so with me today, three guys. I'm going to start you off with the first one based on in no order of importance or anything like that but dizzy welcome to on, man? the podcast man thank you very much for joining us dizzy is the uh what would you what would you say your job is in your own terms uh i think i just oversee everything really <laughs> just the main uh you know make sure keep everybody together basically oh glue i thought you were gonna go for a little like ego dib there and be no, like, no I pretty much run everything but you're very true you're the glue that keeps yeah. gtsrl running smooth glue's and important then, but i mean these guys do a crazy amount of work so oh insane and, and you do amazing streams and broadcasting of the races i do that too yeah yes and fd 3s spirit r based on one of the best cars ever made how's my guy what's in california doing awesome and what do you do for the crew? Um, I joined as a member, obviously, early on, uh, and then quickly got invited to be a, uh, an official, which is now a mod, and uh, I help run a lot of series. The regular league racing, uh, ran the last season of the, our endurance series, GT Sec, and um, yeah, just try and support Dizzy with <laughs> keeping the glue together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Awesome. You do a great job, man. Very helpful to everyone that's in the in the group and anyone trying to get something started of their own, which I think was one of the best things that the group had going for it. Everyone's super helpful to each other. And so, yeah, definitely a big part of that vibe. So Definitely. We would love having the community series and having people come up with their own ideas, run their own series. Yeah. So Thanks for that, man. And uh, now we're on to Matt. Pinapari, <laughs> uh, <laughs> how you doing over there in Japan, my friend? Good morning. How are you? Thanks for having me on. Yes, good morning to you. It's uh, six forty-four in the PM here in Las Vegas, uh, which is West Coast Pacific time. Not a lot of people, for some reason, a lot of people think that we're in like Mountain Time, but we're actually in Pacific. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> uh, what would you say your uh, main thing is with uh, the, the group or GTS in general? Uh, as far as GTS RL is concerned, um, I am now on the uh, on the mod team along with Dizzy and uh, and FD there and my role is pretty much uh, support. I'm, I'm kind of the guy in the background taking care of the website and uh, programming, doing a lot of Discord integra- integration and uh, just kind of supporting the members in that role and trying to make the uh, life for the for our officials and the stewards a little bit easier as much as I can there. Which he nice. does. So humble. <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> he does this, everything. Yes, please step in. <laughs> this dude built a full racing management system out of nothing. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's phenomenal. Like, we were doing everything through Google Docs and the spreadsheets. Nobody knew what was going on because things were getting outdated. He built this system. Everything is organized. Everything is tracked. And integrated it with our discord right we, we send notifications we send steward reviews i mean it, it's phenomenal how much work he's taken off the other mods tables with this system so <laughs> and done stuff that we wouldn't have even been able to do yeah so it's not even work we could have done it right least. exactly so that's the real real talk right. for sure that's <laughs> awesome yeah <laughs> you, and you're a great graphic designer well, uh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Oh yeah, don't you forgot about that too. Uh, <laughs> Pinna Designs is hugely famous. I'm sure you've seen it on uh, yeah the Reddit and and uh, I know your team guys just got featured with one uh, there, which was yeah. awesome. So I would like to extend a, th- a thanks via the podcast to Pinapari for doing the liveries for the Jaguar team for FIA Manufacturer Series. Uh, you could definitely check it out on his profile on Gran Turismo Sport. Um, it's just Pinapari, you know, find it on there. Oh, well, I don't, yeah, you'll see photos of it. You can't get it unless you're me <laughs> but, Exclusive uh, or rights. his friend, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's amazing work. And thanks so much for that. Everyone really loves it. And it just showed up. Uh, if you 
uh, haven't seen or haven't been on like Gran Turismo social media stuff, they have they post regular um, lap guides for you know every once in a while they'll post one, and they did one for the latest round of FIA at Yamagiwa, and his car you know or his design showed up on our car. One of our guys did the lap guide for us. It was just incredible. It's really cool to see his work on the world stage like that. It's fun. No, it's, yeah, it's and an it's awesome. an understatement. You really do have to see it because the attention to detail is insane. In uh, every single one of the uh, deliveries that he does, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I don't mean to don't mean to make you blush so much at the beginning, nah, Matthew. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Keep it up. My ego is just going to go through the roof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the, all the opportunities, though. I really enjoy working with uh, other people and uh, having the opportunity to uh, to do stuff like that. It's 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 good fun for me, and and that, that's what I do. I mean, I don't I don't race very much, but uh, you know, I do the design stuff and I'll do the the web stuff, and and that's that's what I. Enjoy. Oh, he just muted himself, that's but that's fine. fine. It's cool. We're just Oops. getting used to this platform. Go ahead. Yeah, sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> Did you? I don't know if you caught what I was saying or not, but not, I, I just, just missed like yeah. a quick second of it. Oh, no yeah. Okay. Cool. But yeah, we understand you're very thankful, and we're likewise thankful. And it's cool seeing, uh, especially in so Discord, Reddit, we got to cover that, GTSRL in general, for those people that may be lost. Um, so it's a racing league that's formed on Reddit. It's called the Gran Turismo Sport Racing League. No, you and got almost all that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think we, we started on Twitch. <laughs> Oh, and, was it started uh, on Twitch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and oh, I, see, I, I that's just, how I found uh, it. So let me rebase it and say <laughs> that I found it, and I think it's mostly <laughs> a lot of people did attracted it Reddit, sure. from Reddit. Although, yeah, the the origin of Wolverine isn't as simple as he was some dude from Canada, but sure. that's where everyone knows him from. <laughs> but yeah, no, go ahead and fill us in, Dizzy, because you were there from the start, and I'd yeah, love to that, hear. Yeah, the, well, it's like you said, most people find this on Reddit, but the deep lore was I think I was just stream sniping a dude when uh, <laughs> GTS first came out, you know, it was like day one or two or whatever, trying to get into the same sport mode races, you know, as the guy who was streaming. And uh, eventually, you know, talking through the chat, he's like, yeah, you want to set up a league? Sure. And that was it. Now, it did start out as Gran Turismo Sport Racing League, but we quickly realized that there might be issues with that, you know, making a website and trademarks and copyrights and all that fun stuff. So we switched it up to Gran Touring Series. And so it's been that ever since. But everybody just says GTS RL, right? So it almost never comes up as uh, as what it really is. But, yeah, we started with a handful of people. Uh, most of those original guys are the people on the – well, they were officials first. Now they're mods as, as things progressed uh, over the years. And, uh, yeah, we went from maybe, I don't know, two divisions of ten guys I think we started with is what we tried to get going. And now, you know, there's – whatever there is a thousand people in the discord and multiple leagues and community run races and and uh, our main stuff so it's definitely grown from just a single league to a uh, racing community which was definitely the goal in uh in the whole thing and mostly because you don't really know the longevity of any game right and so it's better to build a community than hang on the the thread of the the game's life i think nice very well said Anything you, uh, you'd like to add in there, FD? Uh, just that, uh, yeah, so obviously a lot of our focus is on GTS, but we have plenty of members that have either migrated on to iRacing or are really into Dirt or even other games. And, yeah, we just kind of stick together. Like Dizzy said, as a community, we still chat on the Discord and everything like that. So Nice. And, yeah, yeah you bring up Discord, which is great, too, because you guys were one of the first – um, communities that I saw really handling uh, organization via Discord, which was inspiring to me. And I, I did that myself in a league that I ran, and a lot of people um, started seeing how, you know, well it can work. And and you guys still do it. Like I, I don't see anyone else doing it as crazy as you guys. So that's hats off to the team. And like we talked about earlier with Pinapari, right. helping the integration <laughs> get along. But yeah. it's it's awesome. It makes it really fun. It feels dynamic. Uh, especially after a race is over, everyone hopping in to those, uh, you know, the chat that is yeah, light, associated with the race. It lights sure. it up, yep. Yeah. <laughs> the text just starts scrolling. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes yeah. that's a good thing, sometimes it's not. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's always entertaining, uh, though. 
Oh, for sure, man. It's so cool. And I would like to go from here into your, um, we already talked about Dizzy's kind of personal history, but I would like to go into the other guys on the cast today, starting with me, which, uh, like we talked about off air, we're kind of <laughs> bad with our memories. I, I don't know exactly when I started uh, my first season or when, I think it was like four maybe, yeah. but right. it's crazy. W- whenever it was it was earlier now in retrospect but um uh, i saw i was attracted to it because i loved your format you know that it was quick races just three uh you know it would be three well quick races three in one day but they would be back to back it was really really fun and all, another thing was i saw f f4 h that's the team right yeah yeah rosso yeah it was there i saw rosso just beating everyone and i was like dude I got to get in there. <laughs> I got to see how I stack up against the European because I used to race against them all the time. And uh, even though I would get beat a lot, uh, I felt like someone's that fast. It's a great learning opportunity. So that was my initial intention. But once I got in there, I started gelling with everyone. It was it was tons of fun. And I did a couple seasons after that. And I did the Rising Sun Super GT League race when, uh, the, Super GT, when the GT 500s first came to the game. And that was run by Pinapari and uh, the Brazilian chap. Uh, Lunatic. His name escapes me. Lunatic L- Punk, I think. Lunatic so. Punk. Yeah. He's awesome. Really, really cool dude. Yeah. And they're still going Super strong with that weird, one, yeah. I think, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. And it's so very cool. popular, too. Oh, it's great, dude. I mean, some of the best racing on Earth in virtual and real real life form. It's one of the coolest parts about this is the all over the planet aspect and so i love that races are just happening at all times i wake up in the morning and these guys are like deep in endurance racing already i could just start <laughs> watching or it's just cool at any point lunchtime the europeans are going at it you know we're racing and then these guys you guys on the west coast are up until five in the morning six in the morning for me doing <laughs> test labs yep. and me and bill bader are testing yeah, <laughs> just never ends shout outs to so, bill yeah, yeah. Definitely, he he definitely has Didn't helped man. a lot lately. Yeah, man. And so, going into your history there, FD, uh, how do you come across everything? Yeah, so I mean, as far as GTSRL, uh, basically, like you said, I, I found it on Reddit, just a random post said, saying join a league. And I've been playing Gran Turismo since GT One. Was big into the online in, in five and six, and I was in various leagues and, and communities in those two games. So I was definitely looking for that aspect in GT uh, or GT Sport. The previous leagues that I had been in, they either didn't transition or people kind of fell apart, and you know nobody really made the jump to GT Sport. So once I found that on Reddit, I was hooked, got it in, and, and lo- there was st- we were still kind of like in the foundation. Um, before we had the different EU and NA leagues, but uh, saw where it was going and like yeah, decided to uh, stick on to it and yeah, here we are. Thank goodness. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do uh, a bit of real life racing with uh, uh, indoor and outdoor carts. Have a couple of my own carts as well that I run from time to time um, and try and get on the track whenever I can. But, they uh, may wait. Did King of the Carts come in from the first season, or did you influence that? No, King of the Carts was before me. So. Yeah, I think oh, that okay. was yeah one of the first things. Yeah, that is another fun aspect of the league. <laughs> this is pretty much a huge <laughs> ad for GTSRL, and I'm happy to accommodate that. But <laughs> if you don't know what <laughs> King of the Cart is, it's this. It's pretty much a blow off valve after the, the races. Uh, you you know three rounds happen or three slots or whatever you want to call them stages happen heats happen and then at the end of these things you, everyone just kind of has a race where a boost is on high uh the carts like draft is on the max setting and all that and then everyone just kind of races carts around the track that they were just racing on and just has a ton of fun not no only rules. races yeah. yeah it's it's no rules so it's a death race you know <laughs> <laughs> and uh we also have a thing where it, like you said, we have the three races per night. If we have uh, a, somebody that clean sweeps all three races, they win all three races. We have what's called the quad crown where they try and win the king of the carts race. And Ooh. so far that has never happened because... Ah, it is so <laughs> tough. Dude. Well, because not only is it tough to win a king of the carts, when you've then sweep the night, everybody out there is gunning for you to just <laughs> kill you and not let you win. Yeah. They're joining to, to stop you. 
That's yes. how that's how serious it gets. And, and Dizzy, yeah. it's also good for Dizzy because he he flexes his broadcast muscles at that point, and he oh, I you love know, it. It's so got to call it so hard. Yeah, it's like yeah. shoutcasting because it gets so hype, and there's so much because, like you said, it's full boost and full slipstream means there's just stuff happening nonstop. You know, somebody's passing somebody. And or the, not some of the finishes are like so close, right? Super crazy, or wide or something. Our cl- our quad crown, our closest one, a dude was like point like something off and someone just snaked it from him by <laughs> by a couple tenths and that you makes know. it all the more richer when someone does claim that it's man, truly that legendary crown's crazy yeah for sure they'll get a special thing next to the name i'm sure yeah. <laughs> you'll never be forgotten that'll be but i don't know i don't even know if it's possible we'll see it hasn't because w- winning three races in the night isn't the most rare thing i mean some guys are really dominant and they hit it a lot, especially if it, they just, you know, got a good roll into their division. But that fourth win, it's just so elusive. Might as well paint a target on your back. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's the and good stuff. So this season, you've been running the Super Formulas. Uh, that's an, another aspect of this league is that the main racing league, uh, it runs the three. It's based on divisions. There's uh, three rounds spread out through three weeks. And then there's an off week. There's qualifying and stuff to set divisions. And then it goes into another combo. And behind the scenes, uh, I'm sure it's really interesting to see if we could kind of be a fly on the wall during the decision process on deciding like oh this next season guys i really want to do super formula or whatever which is the one that's going on right now and it's just really cool because everyone really looks forward to it and it's always a dynamic kind of combo that comes out at you or it's a palate cleanser like you know you never know when you can go back to bread and butter gt3 racing and all that but Mm -hmm. yeah what goes into the decision making is there a lot of back and forth or who brings what yeah there's a crazy amount of deliberation which is always (laughs) funny because you know when the community hears what we pick. They're always like, oh, like, how did you pick that? And it's like, oh, my God, if you only knew like what <laughs> conversations went down to get these. like, you, you can't even ask that. But this particular season was such – was so out there. What we normally do is we try to have, like you said, like a bread and butter season and then something a little more out there to, you know, mix it up and test people and, you know, not, not have it always standard. So we go back and forth. Super Formula is definitely way out there. And so it was the first time that we actually polled the whole community and said, hey, if we do it like this and a step down in power each division, yada, yada, you know, would you guys sign up? And so we got more than enough response to do it. And so we're like, hey, you know, don't have to take so much of a risk now. Yep. So it worked out nice. Yeah, you picked some great tracks for it too. Um, the last round being Yamagiwa, which is fun because it's just like you can really throw the car into those corners as fast as sweepers, man. For sure. Yeah, you're like death full is throttle half the death, track, yeah. I think. Especially if you're racing through that sh- that downhill chicane uh, in a pack, it's going to be uh, really interesting. Yeah. May not be the best for Murder. actual racing, but it's no. going to be fun to run. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anything could happen. Gentlemen, start your engines, brothers. Right. That's what I want to hear. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's uh, this is actually the first season I'm racing myself, so it's even more... Uh, that's awesome, man. Yeah, How exactly. have your braces been so far in your estimation? Well, so I started off on a pad because I, I hadn't raced in so long, and most of my racing has been on a pad for Gran Turismo in my career. Let's put it that way. Not, not a career. OG, but, yeah. Yeah. So I just felt like if, you know, why mess with it? Let me just go with what I'll be able to pick up and just go with, you know. But it, in these cars, man, I just could not. I don't have the finesse at all on, on a pad. You, you can have it, but I just don't. And the uh, second I switched to a wheel, I felt way more comfortable. So first week, not so good <laughs> on the pad. Second week, uh, I think I got like triple the points that I did the first week. So hopefully nice. I can keep carrying that momentum to next week. But like you just said, this track is going to be bonkers. I'm just going to try to stay on the track, not kill anybody. And hopefully that that's, that was working for me last week, actually. I think I made like four positions from just not getting a penalty. <laughs> so <laughs> right. I'm just going to keep on that. <laughs> keep on that, that yeah. button fd could probably tell you what it's going to be like in the actual race with uh all the psychos that we have in the in the top five <laughs> or six yeah it's gonna be crazy uh <laughs> hopefully we can uh, stick with lordini but lately he's just been a monster and once he gets out in front it's so hard to catch him yeah quality like, will be huge right yeah qualifying yeah big deal 
track position is key. Lordini, he likes the uh, formula cars, or just he's been on a roll in the past couple seasons. He sandbags every every time before the season, so he'll just be like, <laughs> "Oh, I don't really know this," or "I'm rusty," and yada yada, and then he just destroys. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <No laughs> <issues. laughs> he, he took a break and then he came back. He's like, "Oh yeah, I yep. gotta shake off the rust. I'm not gonna be so fast." And what he goes out and wins the division, like championship. <laughs> yeah, like killed it. Oh yeah, man. I, I've had some memorable races with him. I remember season. I want to say like six, seven. Uh, it was GT3 or Group 3, uh, and we were at Dragon Trail Gardens, and uh, I was in the Mazda. He was in the Porsche, mm. and we had a really fun race. I was chasing him down in the first one, and the second one, he was chasing me, and then the third one, it was just like we had a few people up front. So, yeah, he's very fair, very very fast, and he, he learns a lot, but he's one of those guys that's frustrating. Like He'll be behind you, and you'll kind of – um, maybe you're practicing or whatever and he doesn't know the track so much, but he'll learn it like with you so yeah. fast. And just, even if it's, a, if, if it's super fresh for him, like, oh man, he's, yeah, he's a really good one. It's, it's cool to have him back and kind of slaying more. Uh, yeah. I, and, I, yeah. And, uh, I don't know, maybe he has gained speed or I got slower. I don't know, but, uh, I had some battling with him in, in previous seasons and yeah, definitely very, very clean racer, very fair. And, uh, fun to race against and late yeah. lately he's been being challenged by uh ams cooper who is nearly as fast and yeah very good racer as well very clean i've had good racing with him as well so them two yeah. have been battling out at, to- at the top coop is cool man he's really fun uh he's very clean and i mean at least to me <laughs> i don't know how it is with other people <laughs> he's pretty cool though he's uh um yeah, I was going to mention AMS crew, so that was a cool thing that I saw, um, starting with a red line coming in, I think, or somebody came, somebody from the AMS guy. I think Fives was first. Is he, yeah, um, I was going to say, I don't know who the very first one was, but it could have been. I think it was Fives, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and he brought a bunch of guys over, and a lot of them are really fast, and it's just more the merrier, and makes, I bet you even Division 2 is just like, those guys are at the point, at, at the front of Division 2, like, that's still a good, good pace, you know? Oh, yeah, for, for sure. sure. Especially like last season, where Division One was so stacked, so it, it was just ridiculous. Like the the bottom half of the division was usually the top half of of the same one, you know. Right. Yeah. And people uh, that would normally be Division One got pushed down to the Division Two. Yeah. yeah. About half. And what's what I also enjoy is you have you know the sun to your moon, and the, or the uh, silver to your gold. <laughs> you have the European side of of things which run on different days and different times to accommodate their schedules a little better. But uh, I've tried to run in a season where I, I went up against them, and it was, man, they, they raced really hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the, definitely what but, we hear. Yeah, but really fun. I mean, Norax is an absolute monster, dude. Like, I, I put I put him and Dodge Lamb in, in a pretty close company as far as the best pad users Yeah, in I was just going to say, I love that he's on pad in third person just chilling like right you know yeah oh, insanely fast dude super fast you could shut up That's all the haters that, that think you need a wheel you know to be fast it's not true yes um and so was there any favorite moments that you guys th- could think of from the past whether it's like in the discord or the races or anything really just starting with you dizzy Man, I don't know. There, I mean, there's probably so many epic racing moments that we've seen, but my, my, my favorite part of this league, and I tell these guys this all the time, is just the the community, especially up top. I mean, I pretty much talk to these guys every day, which is hilarious. You know what I mean? And so that, to me, is the is the coolest part, knowing people from all over the world, from Japan, Germany, and Austria, uh, the Netherlands, you know, uh, Sweden, right? All Just all the way across. So... That's that's the you know the fruits of the labor for me doing that kind of stuff. We've done you know Secret Santa and cool stuff like that with each other. A bunch of us, anybody that's been close enough to meet up, we've done that the mod and stuff. So yeah, that's been really cool. Nice. And then uh, going on to you, FD. Oh, put me on the spot. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> and I said I the best thing, so that was it. Yeah, I mean, as far as on track moments, I do recall. Uh, racing lordini we had a uh, a streetcar season and uh, him and i 
through quite a few races actually him and i had a lot of close battles and, and things like that so that was a lot of fun to know that somebody that can dominate like that but i was able to battle him some people some of the the d2 and d3 guys call me an alien but i, I tell them no nah, i'm only a half alien yeah. it's like the usually it's like the the aliens out front then a gap then me and then a gap and everyone else <laughs> so uh yeah that's interesting because like what is an uh alien really to you Everyone has their own definition, but to me, uh, an alien is somebody that can be fast at any track, you know, yeah. where they don't seem to have a weakness. You the consistency. An alien. Yeah, consistency. Robotic consistency yeah. is also yeah, exactly. part. But, um, yeah, you can be an alien in certain tracks, certain combos. I, I, I would consider you as, like, a, a road car alien on certain tracks. Like, you, I feel like you really get a nerve ring as well, man. I remember chasing you in one of the really early seasons. And being like, damn, he's, he's really figured it out. Like, geez. <laughs> well, yeah, Gran Turismo 4, they had the 24-hour events where you actually ran 24 hours of a race. And so I did 24 hours in Nürburgring, 24 hours of Spa. Yep. Just pause it. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> pause at that time I was in school. Pause it, go to school. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that reminds me, GT6 released with the, uh, well, they released without the ability to pause during endurance races. Yes. Like you had to do the whole thing. And then it came out like six months. I feel like it was six months after the fact. It was a long time. After the game came out that they finally let you save during <laughs> an endurance race, man. It was just tragic. Brutal. Yeah. Did you, um, how long have you been playing the GT series, uh, Pinapari, Matthew? <laughs> Uh, I, I've started playing in uh, GT1, I guess. Uh, got a PlayStation 1 when it first came out and uh, just really loved it. I mean, let's see, after that with GT1, 2, 3, 4, and then you got the Prologue series. And, and I just did just a little bit of GT6, not a whole lot. And I never really got into the online aspect of it until GT Sport. But, well, yeah, Sport I've, finally I've been gave a, deliveries. Go ahead, sorry. Oh, I, I was going to say, when, when I first got into GT1 and 2, back then we used to have a, there was like a little box that you would put on the back of the PlayStation where you could open up the uh, the program and hack in, you could change out, swap the engines around, stuff like that. So we used to mess with that around a lot and uh, taking, I don't know if you remember in GT1, but they used to have these little mini cars, like the K cars. Yeah. Yeah. We'd, yep. we'd, we'd, we'd crack those open and put a GTR drag car engine in it, just <laughs> do, do wheelies down the track. <laughs> it was a blast. But That's awesome. Yeah, there was a whole, on uh, GT Planet, there's a whole section dedicated to that. I forget what they, what they, call, what they call it. I think they just call it mods. Yeah. But, um, yeah, man, people are get really creative when you can swap engines out and stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's that's kind of my background. And, and I, I got into liveries, and I don't want to change the subject on, you know, away oh, from GT. No, but, I was going to go on to but, uh, about your history and all that, yeah. I, I started doing liveries pretty much with Forza, and because and, uh, they, had, they had the livery editor and that. And, and you had to make up everything from shapes. And uh, just had a blast making cars. You know, you sit down and, and just time goes away because you're, you're focused on just how the lines flow and all that stuff and you know i guess you guys really enjoy doing time trials and and all that stuff well my thing is just sitting in front of the tv and working out shapes and, and stuff like that and that's that's <laughs> kind of how i came to it <laughs> that's so cool and so before that did you have like training in graphic design or did you uh, do maybe deliveries for pc games or yeah, actually, I'm. Uh, my background is in graphic design and some photography and stuff like that. I have, I've had a design company here in Japan as well, so I, I've done it on, on a professional basis. So that's a lot of that stuff and, and knowing how to, you know, kind of fake highlights or shadows, add contrast areas. That's that's kind of what I get into. That's awesome. Yeah, and, and there's a lot of cool detail that that you can find in your liveries that you don't find anywhere else and it's stuff like body kits you know adding a little flare to the fender or um a little cut to the the rear bumper to make it seem like it's uh you know some sort of new body kit that was put on which is just awesome and uh you contribute a lot to the the decal uh on gt sport the detail uh the decal like kind of inventory would you say uh i've, I've made quite a few i don't know how many hundreds yeah. of different decals i've got but that's kind of one of the things that I, I started doing with uh, the GTS RL crew as well. 
when I first joined back in, what was it, April? Maybe season six or so? I'm not sure, but um, I just kind of thought that it'd be nice to have, you know, uh, racing league boards and uh, Those are sweet. have the uh, the group logos and things like that. So I just started making things a little at a time. And, and over a long period of time, you <laughs> build up quite a collection of different objects. And just one day, I just kind of decided to start trying to play around with the body kits and that's when I started off doing that so I've, I've kind of built up a process for doing that sort of thing and uh, that's 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 my niche I guess what I find amazing is that when I've looked at various pinna designs like you know you look at it and it looks great but then you start looking at the details and you, it's things that you don't notice immediately but that just look aesthetically pleasing like you said all those extra shades or vents and things like that like adding body kit where the stock car doesn't have it and it's just it's amazing how much detail you get into it's crazy oh thanks yeah it's yeah, i love it little shade like around the headlight or something yep that, i remember like, that from the I, tutorial yeah yeah yeah, you'd be a great makeup artist. I don't know if you ever thought about it. <laughs> Easy. You do makeup for cars. Makeup tutorial for the Jaguar. Tune into my channel. Subscribe, like, and comment. <laughs> Golf gas station thing on someone's face. <laughs> the decal. Do you, yeah, Pina, do you remember what like your actual first like livery, not livery, but uh, decal that you did for GTSRL? Was it the number boards? I want to say it was the number boards for the divisions. Yeah. And uh, I, my first livery for the uh, for the community, I, I jumped in one day and I was like, uh, okay, I want to make a livery for somebody. What, you know, give me something to do. And Lanatron, number 88, <laughs> he, he says, all right, I'll, I'll give you a shot at it. And so he, he told me that he wanted a, a Corvette. So I, I made a, a kind of a simple livery for him. It wasn't really over the top at the time, but you know, it had Damn. a few different small things on it. But that was the first one I did. Wow, he has the holy grail. I didn't know that. I'm gonna mess <laughs> yeah. with him now all the time. Be like, wow, Atlanta. You're I, and I don't first. think I've ever seen him run it, run it in the series. Yeah, I mean, that's <laughs> bullshit. He, he's got a garage queen there. Yeah, <laughs> Damn, I I sport my pen and design. Me too. Uh, you know, I we do too, man. I, I appreciate that. One one thing I want to um, kind of go back to that you guys were talking about uh, how the divisions and stuff like that the, uh, the internal official conversation a lot. One thing that's not really mentioned so much is how much testing these guys actually do yeah. to ensure balance between the leagues and uh, you know can the guys in D three handle cars at that level? Can the guys at D one is that going to be challenging enough? And uh, FD spends so much time testing. I mean. I don't know how many how many hours would you say you put in a week for that? Oh, I don't know. I'm on GTS every night, so I don't know. <laughs> Testing yeah, the man. peripherals, like you're saying, the difference between what a pad user is going to feel to to awesome. wheel, all that kind of stuff. It's crazy. Yeah, and when I do awesome. my testing, I, I make sure to drive very inefficiently. Like I over rev the cars so that we make sure we're okay on the fuel settings and things like that. So yeah, and like with this season with the Super Formula. Because I'm on a, a pad, there's certain tracks, certain turns that it's just whatever it is. I don't know if it's the input, input smoothing or whatever. It just kills you. So I made sure that none of those tracks were included so that there was an even playing field. And then because we have our third race, which is longer mandatory pit stop, we want it kind of a gamble to not take tires with that pit stop. So we've got to get the tire wear settings just right. So... Uh, uh, multiple times I'm, I'm running that race to see how the degradation is and then do a pit stop and see how it is, you know? So yeah, I get, I get into it. <laughs> Great work, man. I mean, as you can see, people that do FIA or keep track of it in, in GTS, uh, it took, it takes those guys, they designed the damn game and it <laughs> takes them fucking forever to even figure out, uh, when, how much, where is the right, where and now they've yep. gotten it to a point where they can kind of, they know how, where to dial it in and, and all that but it's yeah super props to spending the time to get all all of that right and having everything considered because there is a lot i've tried to do it for my own events before too and once you think you have it set you know you have a different um you have your your closed beta test but then when it's an open beta test and, or whatever you realize like oh you're you're wrong because you didn't consider this and so or they oh, patched the game we had the, oh yeah patch the game <laughs> yeah like, oh no but yeah, we kind of made that blunder. One, because uh, before 
we didn't run with tire wear or or fuel usage on so it was just like tt mode for the whole race and then we decided you know let's just turn it on at very low levels just to get a little bit of wear nothing crazy um and i remember one of the first seasons we did that we were doing the um the group three road cars that you buy from the mileage oh, exchange yes. and so we tested a few of those and obviously not everybody had all the cars and so we had our settings well, come to find out, one of the races, the Mazda runs out of fuel. <laughs> but no other car did, so people who chose the Mazda were having to fuel, so we... She's thirsty. We apologized for that blunder, but... Uh, <laughs> uh-huh. Listen, man, my Mazda ran out of gas, yeah. man. But yeah, so... I'm leaving. Ever since then, we made sure that, you know, we really try and test the, the wide range of, of the cars. Like, when I do my Group 3 testing, I know uh, the Beetle is the thirstiest... So that's the one that I test with to make sure fuel's okay. The Audi's the hardest on tires, so that's what I test to make sure a tire is okay. You know, things like that. We we had that whole uh, period of time where we were testing the uh, the stick shift versus paddle shift. And, oh yeah, <laughs> that was crazy. Yeah, you, yeah, Pin and I we we went to Special Stage Route X, and because he he was on a wheel with the paddle shifter, I'm on a pad, and you know. Um, yeah, just seeing which one is... Or actually, no, you have the actual H pattern shifter, right? Yeah, I have the H. And we, yeah, we, were, t- yeah, yeah. we were testing the clutch, and uh, it's, basically we were just drag racing it out. <laughs> yep, yep. To anyone who thinks the time of day affects the track temperature... Nope. <laughs> FD has done Ask these guys. testing. So. <laughs> They'll know. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I want it to. That'd yeah. be great. Let but, me see. <laughs> I mean, I've <sighs> tested two times of days back together. More, actually, more than two. Same lap time, you know, under the same conditions, yeah. Like that, that brings up a very interesting topic. Uh, so there is a rumor. I don't know where it started. <laughs> Rain. But what did you say? Did you say the R word? I said the R That's word. That's restricted. <laughs> <laughs> With the hard R. <laughs> hard R, dude. You brought you dropped R A I N. Something that the Gran Turismo Sport community is blissfully unaware of how challenging it is to do. Yeah. Yes. So, what are your thoughts, starting with FD, on the you know implications of adding rain? I mean, would it be something that you guys would consider throwing in right away yes. in the like next season? <laughs> oh, somebody's <laughs> no. excited. Yeah. <laughs> well, because again, like I said, I, I've played every Gran Turismo, so we had you know the dynamic time and weather in five and six, and so it was something I was accustomed to coming to sport. You know, yeah, it looks great, but having these fixed times and no weather whatsoever. It's it's such a letdown. So yeah. I, I love that aspect. Um, actually, shout out to the Australians. I met a couple of guys that all we would run in GT6 was like open wheel cars with uh, slick tires, but uh, they would set the wet track to like 30%. So it was crazy slidey. And it was just so much fun. But, uh, but yeah, I can't wait for it. It's awesome, man. And when I say that uh, it's a rumor... It's something that actually that Pinapar is actually working on, yeah. implica- imp- imp- you know, putting into the game. It's not an official thing. <laughs> of GT Sport. So watch out. He's hacking away. He's modding the system. No. Yeah, we got, we got the pit crew with umbrellas and all that. And- <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. it's a little all rough. It's a little rough. <laughs> Bizarre. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, this weekend, I mean, just in general, GT Sport news uh, for the FIA cats, we're hitting up. The World Tour number two, I believe, in Nürburgring this weekend. 24 Hours of Le Mans happening this this weekend, which is tomorrow, Uh, which is going to be fun. Lots of cool stuff going on there. The last of an era. There's not going to be any more prototypes racing in Le Mans, in the 24 Hours of Le Mans, which is nuts. Yeah, Uh, that's crazy. Yeah, like, um, so... Yeah, and then the next week, what, this is a crazy thing about real life racers. So some of the endurance racers that are in 24 hours of, of Le Mans are actually going to do that race this weekend, and then they're going to go to the, do the Green Hell 24 hours of Nurburgring yeah. the following weekend. So if you think, if you ever feel like you're, you may be having too much fun at any point in your life, fear not, because those guys <laughs> are having the most fun. Adrenaline overdose, right? I mean, it's going to be I intense. Can't even imagine. Wait, can, can right. we go back to the rain thing for one second? <laughs> yeah, no problem. <laughs> I, I, so I think it's interesting only because like FD just expressed joy over having less grip, right? 
But even in our <laughs> yeah. own league, we've upped the tires. We made the tires more grippy because people complain about sliding all over the place. <laughs> so I think it's weird that so many – because, again, a lot of people get hype about weather, but I don't see anybody on sport tires ever. And in my GTS or Gran Turismo history, I was usually road cars and sports hard. Always. And, yeah, and we used to look like, you know, it's bad now looking back, but at the time it was like, oh, man, if you use racing tires, you can't even drive. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you need all that grip. Yeah. Like the, that's, that's how funny. it used to be. So it's just interesting to me how people gravitate to so much grip but then want to drive in the rain. Well, that's the ultimate conundrum in, um, what, in, in regards to what uh, sim racing people think that they want versus what they actually <laughs> yeah. want. And what it is is there was a like, so Kuno simul- Simulonzioni or whatever it is. The guys that did a set of Corsa, they had a funny quote. Or I don't know if it, if it was actually them that said this, but it, the effect was they said, you know, all these guys keep asking us, like, when are you going to put rain? When are you going to do this and that and the other? And and the guy said, you know what? Everyone thinks that they want to go down the Nurburgring in a 60s car, have their tire blow out <laughs> in the rain and at night, you know, with all what, oil in their face, blah, 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 so on. But they, the thing is they do want to do that, but they only want to do it once and then <laughs> yeah. never do it again. Yeah. And so that's what it boils down to for a lot of people. But I definitely agree. Like my um, pedigree from GT earlier, online GTs was doing, um, we would never go lower than racing hards. And sometimes people would even say, um, if it was like a group four kind of scenario, we would want to use um, sport softs. Yeah. Yeah. We, I almost we never, never even touched race cars. It was like, you know, what was it? BP 400 <laughs> with three or 500. Yeah, you know BP. what I mean? You would just tune your car, keep it low, and, uh, yeah, really drive it. Well, it does. Yeah, it's a really interesting chapter in, like, Gran Turismo racing online and all that because five and six were just really different. Oh, yeah. Because people wanted to – there was more about tuning. Mm-hmm. Um there was like spec racing, but even spec racing, there'd be tuning and stuff online. And yeah, but there was a lot more variety. There was more tracks and stuff. There's a, there's really a track creator in, yes. in GT5 that creator, gave yeah. so much longevity to the leagues I was in. Just because six as well had it. Six had it. Yeah, yeah six yeah. had an even deeper one that where you can get pretty close to replicating tracks if you knew what you were doing. Yeah. Um, I guess, and back to the rain, I guess we'll have to wait. And maybe I should temper my uh, my excitement because. We'll have to wait to see how it's implemented because one of the aspects that I loved about it in the previous games was along with the time progression, you could have this variability to the weather. So you could have a race go from dry to wet to dry. Yes, I love that. It was so hard to get it. That's cool. Making the choice to choose when you are pitting for wet tires, how wet is it? Do you go to intermediates? Do you go to full wets? And then when do you get off of them, you know? So... We'll we'll see how that's handled in, in GT Sport, which it may not be because the fixed time. But let's see. We'll see. That reminds me of a nightmare. Um, <laughs> I organized a three-hour uh, Le Mans race in GT5, and I spent a long time getting the BOP correct between. Because my idea was, you know, in real life racing, especially Le Mans, it boils down to essentially two teams. You were lucky, super f- fantastically fortunate if there were three cars in contention of winning 24 hours. So everyone kept thinking, you know, they kept egging people on to do these races, uh, these Lamar repli- replica races, and they would tell everyone, oh, we want variety. We want every single LMP1 car. But my thing was I just wanted two. So it was Audi versus Peugeot. Yeah. And the Audi was great, unless if, but it wasn't so good in the, in the rain. So <laughs> I... The main thing was I tried getting the the settings to because you could change the variability and all that yep. as far as how the rain came on, how likely it was or not, and how much rain would come down once it did. I thought I had all those settings nailed, and I tested it over and over again, but I didn't have it nailed because during the race, um, it, everything was cool. It was raining lightly for like the first hour, then out of nowhere, just hundred percent rain <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> And I was like, no, nah. because I was leading in the Audi, and then I wasn't after the rain. <laughs> why? It really why? Came what down. happened? What was the? Do you know why that happened? It was just a dice roll, man. Oh, okay. the, the algorithm. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't an exact science. It was more art than science. No, there was still, <laughs> there was still some left 
it's a chance yeah. and but it ended up being a good race for majority of the other drivers it was just like it was it felt weird though i organized the race and then i was winning it <laughs> yeah and then god was like nah cheater <laughs> yeah that was a lot of fun though uh have you done um so speaking of endurance races i'm I, we mentioned those earlier but what is the longest that uh, gtsrl's done uh in anything yeah uh we did very well i think in the 24 hours of uh le mans yeah for i racing. In racing yeah Oh, awesome. Who's doing the iRacing? So, Cinebaldi has migrated, uh, Vopsy, uh, So Big Red, Rampant. Uh, we have a newer Night guy, Chathuro. Night, Night View. View. Yeah, yeah, sorry, forget Night View. Sorry, Night View. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, the, the LMP team, uh, they won their, their division. They're in whatever room they were they're in. Split. Yeah, they're split. Nice. Uh, the, uh, the GTE That's team all. had a rough start with, uh, getting caught into an accident that was no fault of their own they got uh, collected they, yeah yeah but they dropped back to like 29th or something like that through just perseverance and and some good stints they got back to what was it sixth i believe yeah I and they so. were just they were within two seconds of fifth at the finish line so amazing races from both of them and it was so fun to watch because they were streaming you know i was checking in on them every couple hours go to bed get back up and they're still racing and yeah it was, it was so cool <laughs> watching them try to wake up the driver for his next stint <laughs> oh yeah yeah we, we unleashed the ping god to get uh, so big red <laughs> oh damn you guys hit he hit the at everyone yeah. well no oh. pinapari has programmed the ping god where uh you can ping somebody in every single channel on our discord at one time instantly. at one time yeah, Inst- yeah. wow <laughs> There, there, there's a button. In, yeah, there's a button in the admin panel that says "Release the Kraken." <laughs> <laughs> but, but you people also aren't familiar with Discord. In ours, is just particularly large for organizational purposes. There's like has to be like I don't know thirty channels that you're gonna get pinged in. So yep, yep. You get a big big number next to your your app. <laughs> it's, it's always fun watching everything light up at once. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I've definitely done that a few times where I've woken up and then, you know, gone right into racing. Yeah. <laughs> it's not fun. Uh, but back to your original question about length of race, if we want to be specific to uh, Gran Turismo, I, I yeah. think it was the the Nürburgring charity race that we oh, did. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That um, I think yeah, Pies was the organizer. I think he wanted around two hours. It ended up being closer to two hours and 45 minutes. Yeah, because it was the 2.4, 2. 4, 4, yeah. I think, was like the whole thing. Oh, yeah, that's what it was, 2.4, yeah, so uh, that that was a... What was that, like three lobbies? Um, I don't recall how many there were, but yeah, we had a ton of people because... Amount. We even raised a good amount of money for that. Yeah, we that had a charity cool. donation to UNICEF and everything, and yeah, it was really cool. It's beautiful. It's awesome, man. I forgot about that. And man. was it just single class? It was a multi-class, right? Uh, I think it was single think, class. Yeah, I don't know. No, have you, you guys oh, think no, it was no, multi? It was. it was too. It was multi class. Oh, so you yeah. have messed with multi class. Yeah, yeah, nice. yeah. So eight and eight. Yeah, it was uh, GT3 and GT4, I believe. Yeah. So, uh, so that get, that brings on the idea of uh, wish list stuff for GT Sport. Uh, starting with Dizzy, like what is what comes to mind as far as limitations for GTS that you wish weren't there and so. Oh man, I mean. I wish I had a lot more control in, as a spectator from the race, obviously, oh, yes. from doing streams. So more camera controls, properly seeing what the driver's seeing, like being able to see if they're on their radar or their lap times or, you know, t- to get all that info would be huge. I'd love to see being able to control the settings of a race, like uh, first per- like cockpit view only or manual only, like be able to control everything in the lobby that'd be also dope uh we'll never get bigger lobbies but that would be sick uh and just the the classic tracks i I miss so much just you know deep forest and trial mountain and route 246 and the special stages and you know to me that's why i play gran turismo those tracks are only there you know it's the only place i could play them so while i know people love spa and and uh, mm-hmm. you know, 
What's the other one? Laguna Seca, Laguna Seca and stuff yeah. like that. You know, like th- those are great tracks. Don't get me wrong, but like I, I have other games that I could play if I really want to get on there. Like that's very true, know? man. And yeah, that's a good point because those tracks, those fantasy tracks, that um, started kind of yeah, I guess you could call them the traditional Gran Turismo tracks, like Deep Forest and such. Sure. They are very special, and uh, yeah. They're just, I couldn't imagine them being in it. I think someone modded, I think they're in a set of course that has mods where you can like do trial mountain and stuff, yeah. okay. but it doesn't even feel, I saw, I watched videos right. and stuff. It's just not the same somehow. And I feel like a lot of, there's a lot of new players of Gran Turismo series with this game because it was so different from the past games. It brought in a new generation, so to speak, and they're missing out like crazy on that stuff. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? That it makes me so sad. So that'd be huge. Any of those get announced, I'll be super stoked. Awesome, man. And what would, what about you, FD? You had time to think about that little ponderiferous question? Oh, uh, this is something I don't have to think about. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> talk about it all the time. <laughs> yeah. Mainly, it, it's to have at least all of the lobby settings that we had in the previous games, like how you could filter down to the, the manufacturers or car classes or even just five individual cars. Like, we had so much more control. Uh, with that, I, I would love that. Like Dizzy said, more people, but we're not getting that because five and six had had the sixteen limitation as well. Um, not happening. But time progression, I mean, that just adds such an element to the racing. And, and we've actually kind of, sort of implemented that into our our race nights, where every step of the way we go to a new time of day. So like. Practice before qualifying is one time a day. Qualifying is another one. Race one is a different one, you know, and, and we step it through. So yeah, we try and simulate that. Um, but included in that is the weather, which, like I just explained, it, it, it's such a different dynamic. Um, those are really my big my big things that I would love because I, I definitely am into the online portion of, of Gran Turismo. Um, cats would be oh, nice, yeah. you know. <laughs> cats you can always use another cat in escapes mode yeah that would be great what happened to him yeah those are my- they gave him a name someone forgot it <laughs> i don't know um but uh yeah those are great points and uh, the thing as far as uh player i i uh, not player but yeah players i like to say racers drivers yeah like kind of bugs me when people are like oh, are you gonna get on and play i'm like i don't play this game i live <laughs> But uh, I think it would be better, yes, to have more. <laughs> I mean, it's cool. Like we have twenty man in FIA, yep. and it's like it's possible. Right? Dedicated. They and have their own servers. Yeah, you're connecting to their servers, right? whereas the lobbies are peer to peer completely. And we've seen the nightmare that that causes because we have a procedure to make sure that there's no issues. <laughs> yeah, oh, I feel like our man. procedures have been spread through other communities, even just our oh, stock sure, checks and all influenced. that stuff. Just, stock checks are yeah. great, great, super <laughs> idea. That was one of the things I was first impressed with in the organization. That was the one thing that made me stand up and think, yeah, man, they've got some thinkers. That's great. <laughs> right. No, we just run um, into so much bullshit and we're trying to keep everything to uh, timely fashion. Well, the same issues were apparent in GT6 and, f- and yeah. 5. That's what's crazy. But we didn't have anything like stuck checks before, even back you you know, know, and years and years and back. And that's the thing. Like, I, I never really saw people stuck, but what I did notice in those previous games is people would be invisible. So yes. as people were readied up, everybody call out the number that they see ready or that they called blue because your number was blue. How many blue? You know. Mm-hmm. So that aspect of it was there, but yeah. And it also serves the other function of, you know, being a practice exactly. starter, which is great. Which, as a race Very director, because yeah. we, we do our stock checks 15 minutes before qualifying, and, and if everything goes well, we do two stock checks, and then they have about a little over 10 minutes of, of additional practice. There have been times where we're doing stock checks all the way to qualifying. You can't, you guys can't get it right, you were going to keep doing it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Turn one. It's just brutal, man. Yep. Yeah, well, we can only hope things get a little more expansive in the PlayStation Five realm. How about uh, Pinapari? What's what's your uh, yeah re- feature request? The wish list. Well, I'm going to be a little bit selfish and, and talk about design and stuff like that. But I, I would really, <laughs> I would really love to see things like uh, multi metallics, you know, in in uh, in the livery editor, Ooh. where you could use different metallic colors on the same car. 
Uh, that would open up so many more possibilities into uh, oh gradients could happen. Yep, huh? gradients and and you, you know they use the uh, they use SVGs for the decals. So there's also other standards in the SVGs where you could actually use what's called a pattern fill. So you could make a carbon fiber pattern, and whatever size you've you've made your your decals in, the pattern would automatically fill in. And, and and the other thing is one thing we had in Forza, which is a layer grouping, where you could group a, a layer and copy the whole thing at once, and that would just make our what we do a lot easier. So that's kind of my selfish little list of, of things that I'd like to see. And uh, like FD and Dizzy were saying as well, you know, time progression in, in the racing, where you could set things up to actually move things along, and kind of give it a, an additional element of chance. I, I love that aspect of endurance racing and strategy and stuff like that and i would i would love to see stuff like that as well and, and of course lobby sizes but you know how that is, that is as well <laughs> that's that's my list it's <laughs> awesome uh, would you be opposed to i know how some people are a little strange when it comes to um design because uh i encountered weirdness when i did the um art car the jeff coons art car bmw livery mm-hmm. which is very nice by the way uh, on, on your profile oh thank you yeah. Ah, means the world. Thanks. Uh, but I posted it, and people, certain people, were like, "Oh, this is cheating. You didn't do it with the controller." And I'm like, "Oh, that's weird." I mean, I think it would be awesome if there was like some part of the website that let you just skin a car using a mouse and keyboard. Like, imagine that. That that would be great as well. I mean, if using whatever tools you're used to, um, to you know, to be able to express yourself in those ways, that would that'd be amazing. And you can go too far, of course, you know, like uh, delivery stuff in iRacing and probably a set of Corsa as well, <laughs> which is just a nightmare. I mean, it's, it's of course, you know, you have the power of Photoshop and Illustrator and all those design programs, but it's just horrendous because you can't see anything that you're putting on the car in real time like you can in GT, where you're moving around the car, looking at it from the different angles. You can't really do that easily. You, you can to a certain degree, but it's, it's much more difficult. Yeah, if you want to get an idea for what he's talking about, go ahead and Google like texture map, maybe like RX seven texture map or whatever, and you'll see it's like you know peeling an orange and flattening it on exactly. a table. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. And and then you have to deal with the light maps as well, which is weird. I can't believe you were called a cheater for liveries. I didn't know that was even a thing. Oh, dude, look it up, That's... man. Look at the, you can see the comments on my uh, the decal that I posted up. I didn't and, yeah, even know that weird. was possible. <laughs> that's what, yeah, dude. You call you cheater for anything these cheater. days. Well, that, that's a smart way to go about it, though. I mean, if, you, if you've got a, a big pattern that you've got to cover a lot of area of the car, why waste so many layers in in the editor when you can compress it into one decal and just do it that way? It's so much easier. Right. Yep. Yeah. Works, Works smarter, harder, not harder. Yeah. Yep, there yeah. you go. <laughs> <laughs> We're on two sides of the planet, and that just happened. <laughs> Clicked yeah. I just well, thought of one more thing in case anybody of official yeah. status is listening. Please, can we have the FIA penalty zones in lobbies? Yeah, yeah. We've implemented this through our own rules, but it's it's messy, and uh, it would just be so much nicer if we had those penalty burn zones. Oh, uh, it would it would make things so much easier. It would decrease a lot of arguments. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be great. I think I don't think yeah it took a while for them to integrate it even into sport mode that was weird right well no uh, which it, I, think it could I work. get it I mean you know they tested an FIA make sure it works okay put it in sport mode make sure it works but why don't we have that option in lobbies yet you know like yeah I'm all for it I think that we yep. go then you then you know if a, if a lobby was serious or not at a glance you yep. know, that's the other key but um so We've had a great conversation, and I would want to uh, kind of end this instance because I definitely want it to happen again in some form or another because you had a great time, and we've learned a lot here. But I wanted to cap it off with some nice uh, shout-outs, credits to people that may not be here with us. You know, we pour out a little whiskey for our homies that may not be with us anymore or maybe just uh, doing something else today. <laughs> <laughs> but... uh yeah, who are some members that, like, for me, I'll start it off and then we'll go to Dizzy, but uh, Lanatron was a huge, huge reason of why 
Because I, I could have just bounced into the league and just left. Like, I mean, it seems like that now. I know. I will be back. <laughs> yeah. But it it's only seems like that now because this, this thing's been going on for so long. But at, I, spent, I had a good chunk of time in the series. And a big part of why I was there was Lanatron. And he is super, super cool. He has the best, like, um, airplane pilot. <laughs> I was voice hoping you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> And he makes you just feel cool. Yeah. He is cool in real life too. Yep. Oh, you got to meet him? No, but we've seen. You know, we know what he looks like, and uh, he. Oh, he got he out of looks jail. Like, nice, yeah, he looks dude. just like your typical badass. You know. <laughs> That's awesome. And going on to you, Dizzy. I mean, they didn't want to. You can definitely go on to talk about whoever you. I like mean, yeah, I'd well. have to shout out every, all our mods. Will Becky, uh, you know, is an am- amazing guy. UK, uh, Cinebaldi, like we said, does the iRacing stuff now, but a good kid. Uh, Rush from the Netherlands, great kid. And these young guys impress me just as much because they, they put in real work. Uh, Reaper, he's the man. You know, Pies, another UK guy. Man, why can't I uh, scroll up here? Goat and Genesis, right? EXE, those are all the main guys. But Fire Marshal Bill, he's OG. He hasn't been around for a while. He's been doing his thing, uh, upgrading his, uh, yeah. his Fire Marshal status. And... Uh, even shout outs to old school man. He was the, uh, the OG guy that started with me. He definitely wouldn't be here without uh, without starting it up. So, and then all our officials. There's a bunch of officials now. So, yeah, everybody everybody puts in work. Yes. Um, yeah. Those the mods that are like uh, I don't know. I don't know. Guess yep. he's OG. He's also been really. Uh, holding stuff down lately, lately in RE Soul Survivor 1000. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and who would you like to shout out to there? Uh, well, FD? so Dizzy just mentioned basically the whole mod team, so yeah, I'll go. I'll uh, to. I'll touch on the uh, the officials. So uh, we recently expanded where we now have the what were previously officials now mods, and then we've uh, expanded to have better organization with the official team. AMS five signs. Uh, and some some of these are just longtime members. Others, relatively new, came in and just showed a level of commitment and organization that we liked. Um, so we have Domus as well, Fopsy, Jake, Dan, Harry, three people racing at once, <laughs> Mick Mac, <laughs> uh, Rampant Lion, and Paul, UK, Daddy O's UK as well, uh, Night View, who was uh, on our Night View, He's cool. our uh, iRacing. He's he's made the jump to iRacing as well. And uh, you mentioned him before, Lunatic Punk, uh, oh, yes. runner of the RSS or RSGT series. So Big Red as well. And then uh, we just recently brought on a few new members for our stewarding team. So we got uh, Bill Bader, Iron Duck, Robert DeMicro, Micro, I don't know, Trousers of Doom. So, And uh, nice. as I touched on before, Bill Bill has been a huge help with, uh, with testing as well. Um, in this season with the Super Formula, we decided to go to allow tuning, uh, and we put out a base tune that everybody could use, which was developed by Bill. So he's he's been a huge help to the uh, to the community. Yeah, he helps Lordini every week. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, Lana, Lana says, you know, just when you think Bill's your best friend, he's helping you out. He's gonna he, then he goes and, and gives a tune to the enemy. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> So he's just a nice guy overall, and yeah, very willing to help and and run laps and and help you out. So it's great. So a special shout out to Night View for he's been streaming the EU events yeah, too. So that's always cool. Keep everything live. And Pina, Pina, Pina. Yeah, I mean, it was just Jizzy and uh, FD said you know the entire mod crew and and our officials. These guys have really helped keep the community rolling, and keep it smooth. Uh, you know, they take care of things on a day-to-day basis and they put in a ton of time. And, of course, the steward team as well. I mean, these guys spend so much of their personal time uh, reviewing incidents and, and going back and forth and discussing things and making sure that uh, the league stays clean. Uh, I, you know, I, I can't go through all their names, but I think Dizzy and uh, FD covered most of it. But really, thanks a lot to all those yeah. guys for all their work. I mean, that's amazing the amount of teamwork and the amount of effort they put in. And uh, on, the, on the website of things, uh, Lunatic Punk, uh, he's done a fabulous job helping out with uh, the Dis- Discord bot 
stuff and the integration of all those things between the web and uh, different systems and stuff like that. And uh, Rush as well for helping out with the uh, website design and uh, taking care of things when uh, when we need it. But yeah, just all in all, just nice. the entire community. It's a great place to be, and uh, I, I really have enjoyed uh, the time there so far. And thanks for uh, all the opportunities that it's provided. It's 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 been great, really. Like yeah, I think y'all deserve a good <laughs> um, pat on the back, man. And uh, it's a great community. You built it up well. I was going to ask you, uh, Pena, about. So I know there's a cool like one of my favorite aspects of the Discord is going into the liveries section to see what people are coming up with lately and who are some of the people that have impressed you you'd want to recognize in just the design department kind of thing ah that's that's, that's true I, I should have mentioned that and then uh, those guys will probably be on my case later on but <laughs> uh, but Balwork, he, he does some some fabulous yes. job um some amazing work and uh of course alpha um he's with uh lazarus i believe as far as team liberties it just took just yep. fabulous attention to detail and great work from those guys. And uh, our friend Inno, he you know he he's got his uh, Ferraris and and he does a great job with those as well. And there's just a lot of guys uh, that put out a lot of different points of views with design. And uh, some guys prefer a single type of car, other guys prefer a certain class, and and they do a really outstanding job with that as well. And uh, you know their participation in uh, livery contests. Is of course always appreciated, and I, oh, yeah. it, it, it adds something to the uh, the off the offbeat. I mean, the non racing side, of course, but yeah, it's it's great. Awesome. There's even uh, great way. The, the, I think you have. Is it two bots that you got? One that shows different liveries randomly, if you want, and one for uh, just screenshots, I guess, or. Yeah, I I, I just uh, got done doing the uh, the week scrapbook, so we scrapbook. everything that goes up into the. Uh, the league scrapbook channel i've got a bot that comes down and uh, it pulls things into our web scrapbook and you can tag things and uh, and there's a lot of little fun little things as well if you type in uh, a random livery yeah. the bot will go find up a, a random livery and show it to you and, and sometimes it'll report if it was in a contest you know what the results were just different, different little things like that yeah love it you're awesome you're awesome Pinapar. you run you're a man that runs on coffee and if i could send you anything it would be the most strong coffee on earth. <laughs> the finest keep you going. Nevada coffee. Because you work so hard and it's just, uh, yeah, you deserve all the praise and all the good stuff. So thanks again to both of you. Oh, sorry, <laughs> all three of you uh, for Free being topics. on the show. Yes. This is great, right, man. You. Four people all talked very well amongst each other with each other. Yeah, it was other. lots of fun. And, yeah. Thanks for uh, having us. Yeah, appreciate it, Wardos. Let's do some. Thank you, Matthew. And let's do something like this again soon and keep in touch and keep the community informed and see where everything takes us going forward from here because uh, Gran Turismo has been a great, um, amazing tool for bringing people together. And I can't thank the designers of the game enough for this crazy global community of flat earthers coming together and realizing that <laughs> we can all contribute something in our own crazy cool ways and i think we displayed that with the guests that i brought on today so again thank you very much Arigato. go go green cats yeah. go green cats yeah. <laughs> Shout i'm gonna cry it's too early happy weekend to all of you out there happy listening and to you guys in japan happy father's day to those that may have little things running around yeah. or maybe if you have a little dog baby you know that's cool too Count it. Thanks so much, guys. Take care, and we'll talk again soon. Okay, thank you, brother. Cheers. Arigatou gozaimasu.